Welcome to Liberty Podcast. We invite you to listen to our podcast today. We hope that it will inspire and bring change to your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good morning to the shepherd of the house and his wife and saints of God. You know the testimony they were talking about. Thinking back like before what happened this week, I would think it's so trivial. And you know, sometimes I realize that we try to limit God. We try to say, oh, that's something too small. You know, think, go and have other things to think about, but it's not so. Someday this week, I was listening to um, the Word 107. And a lady called and she testified about a washing machine. She said her washing machine wasn't working. And she said she had so much clothes to wash. And she said she just had to pray. She said she prayed on that machine and it just started to work. You know, and we, we really limit God. So my testimony is about two years ago when we were building our house, we bought a television from overseas. Bought a television. It was on sale and whatever. And the television never worked. It was a whole big issue to get it back. And it, the cost to fix it is like cost of buying a new television. My new television never worked. It was a 60-inch television. It never worked. And that was real hard because I'm saying that that's money. That's just money. It's sitting in our house right now. It's just, it's money. So it's not the fact that it's a television, it's money. So much other things I could have done in my house, you know? And that money just sit down there. And you know, my husband and I, we was really worried about it because like I said, this money rests down there. We forgot about it two years ago, right? Somebody called me on Friday from work. And they said, you know, we had a promotion in December, you remember? I said, no. Um, she said, you know what? You just want a television, a 60 inch television. I said, I said, thank you, Lord. I said, oh my God, he's replacing the television that's sitting down in my house there. Eh? That not doing anything. And you know, I just want to give God all the praise, all the honor and the glory. And you know, it's never in our time. It's in God's time, you know, and let's not limit him. All right? Amen. Today is Pentecost Sunday, if you didn't know. Amen? Today is Pentecost Sunday. And as much as we are full go- a full gospel church, it is good to know something of Pentecost. This is a message that I preached before. You'd find that even though I've preached it before, it would have a little more little twist and turns in it as we minister because, you know, you never really finished preaching a message. Amen? So we're looking at the book of Acts. We're going to Pentecostal headquarters. Book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, reading from verses 1 to 4. See, my good brother came to visit us today. It's, It's really good. Amen. Acts 2, 1 to 4, it says, when you found it, please say amen. amen. Okay. Maybe we're a little too comfortable. Could we stand at our feet and just kind of read it together and get it into our spirits? It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a song from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they, were, and they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen? Amen. Father, this morning, as we minister from the book of Acts, as we look again at the day of Pentecost. We pray that by the power of your spirit that your people would be so energized from your word. I thank you, O God, for this opportunity to stand before your people, O God. I give God the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. So on this day, this day called Pentecost Sunday, Pentecostals charismatic all over the world, they celebrate the coming of the Holy Ghost in the upper room, or what we call the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And uh, we are going to look at it 
today again. So in Acts 2 and verse 2 it says, And suddenly there came a song from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And it what? Filled not just part of the house, but filled the whole house. The Spirit of God filled the whole house where they were sitting. Amen? Amen. So we're going to look at the persons at Pentecost. We're going to look at the presence, what took place at Pentecost, and we're going to look at the power received on the day of Pentecost. So when we think about the person of Pentecost, let's first look at what does Pentecost mean. Pentecost means 50. It was a, it's a celebration, a Jewish celebration, a Jewish feast. Um, it's called the Feast of Weeks, but also the Feast of Harvest, because on that day, Jewish people presented to the Lord the first fruits of the annual wheat harvest. On the day of Pentecost, they presented the first fruits of the annual wheat harvest. It's according to Exodus 34 and verse 22. And this quote is drawn from the Acts of the Holy Spirit from Dr., the late Dr. Peter Wagner. What is the significance? The significance of the number 50. It symbolically represents liberty, freedom, or deliverance. 50 represents what? Freedom, liberty, and deliverance. Say that with me. 50 represents freedom, liberty, deliverance. Amen? So if you came today, today is the day of Pentecost, you can expect, based on the word of God, that you can receive freedom. And isn't it amazing that the Spirit of the Lord gave us the name Liberty Broadcast. And today we are filming Liberty Broadcast. So you might just see yourself on TV, amen? Amen, as he scans the camera, he sometimes, the last time he keeps seeing Gonzi, Gonzi back, a Gonzi head and that kind of thing. Liberty, freedom, and deliverance, amen? amen. Liberty, freedom, and deliverance. It speaks about release. It speaks about canceled debts. It speaks about families being united. It speaks about people proclaiming liberty. <clears throat> the Jews have something that they call the year of liberty or the year of what? Jubilee, which is also 50 years. And it's, that's when they free everybody. People are freed. People are set free. People are freed from debt. People are free from all kinds of things in the year of Jubilee. <coughs> Excuse me. So Pentecost is a time of freedom. Amen? And the word of God says that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen? And we believe that God is able to free people and free each of, any, each of us from whatever that we are going through. So in the New Testament, the day of Pentecost meant liberty and freedom from all covenant bondages of the ceremony of the law. It meant freedom and liberty with Christ, for Christ has set us free. <coughs> Excuse me. It meant that they were at liberty to serve the Lord, not in the oldness of the letter, but in the newness of the spirit. Amen? So although it means liberty, liberty doesn't mean license to do anything. Amen? So although we have liberty, it doesn't mean that we can, although you're free, it doesn't mean that you are free to cuss, you're free to do what you want, you're free. You understand what I'm saying? You are freed from sin. You are freed from the burden of sin. You are free from, your bond, from the bondages that the enemy placed on you. You are free to worship Christ in spirit and truth. You are free to live a holy life unto God. You are free because Christ paid the price for you. He paid the price for you, so you are supposed to be free. Amen? For whom the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. Amen? The Bible tells us in the book of Acts that they were all in one accord and in one place. 120 folk, disciples, apostles, they were in the upper room, 120 of them, in one accord and in one place. In one what? In one what? In one accord 
and they were in one place. So when you see one accord and one place, it speaks of what? Unity. Amen? It speaks of unity. Now, as I was looking at this again, here it is. Jesus left. And he said that he would baptize them in the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. But while Jesus was on earth, sometimes Jesus had 5,000 people ministering to. Amen? Thousands of people Jesus had ministering to. How come it's just 120? How come it's just 120? Where are the others? 120 alone remained. And 120 alone gathered in the upper room. It says to me that persecution has the ability to destroy people. And persecution on all levels. Religious persecution, financial persecution. Persecution has the ability to cause people to scatter, to cause problems. Persecution. So they were persecuted, but they gathered 120 of them in the upper room. And as they gathered together, they didn't just gather, they didn't gather to eat a food. Amen. They gathered to pray. Expecting God, expecting Christ to baptize them with the Holy Ghost. True? How do we know that? In Acts 1, verses 13 to 15, it says, what does it say in Acts 1? Verses 13 to 15. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthias, Matthew, sorry, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon Zelots, Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with what? With what? Let me just walk around here a little bit. With what? With what? All right. Just, just remember it says here, with the what? Good. With the woman. All right? And Mary, and Mary what? Mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. His brothers, right? So Jesus had brothers. So, 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 so Mary didn't stay a virgin. He had brothers, his brethren. Okay? Isn't it amazing, folks, that we see in the text, they mention some men. And it just said, his brethren. But when it comes to the woman, it just said, the woman. My hypothesis is this. It could have been more women gathered there than men. And the woman was too many to mention and to record. You're talking 120, and all that was mentioned is a few men. Is it because they were just mentioned for emphasis? But it just says, with the woman. And look also, it says, Mary was there with them. Okay? Now, folks, Mary was the one chosen by God for the Christ to come. So she carried the Christ for nine months. Amen? Born, celebrate Christmas, grew up, died on the cross, and gone again. Going to heaven, right? Amen? But here it is, we see Mary in the upper room again. 
I heard this mentioned somewhere before, and I'm going to say it again because I've, I've uh, Keston, I find it so, it's so profound that Mary is the only woman in the world who was able to carry her son twice. On the day of Pentecost, she was filled with the Holy Ghost, his spirit. She got born again, so she carried him on the inside. The only woman in the world who carried her son twice. I wonder if you catch that. You catch it? And she is so gracious. I mean, he is Lord. He decides... And I'm going to live in Gonzi also. I'm going to live in Nicole. I'm going to live in Sister Erlen. I'm going to live in Gonzi's sister. I'm going to live in Philip. He, I'm going to live in you. Amen? Amen. Uh, so when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were where? In one accord and in one place. So when we look at the, my second point, it talks about the presence. Visible signs of the invisible spirit. It says, and what? Suddenly. Acts what? Acts 2 what? It says Acts in Acts 2 verse what? Tell me. Verse 2 says, and suddenly there came a song from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. Listen to what it says. Listen to what the historians say. They say that the song apparently was public and external, not just some inner phenomenon of group psychology that only the believers had experienced. It was loud enough, unusual enough, and probably terrifying enough that people who were in the temple area of Jerusalem or from other parts of the city as well were drawn toward it, towards it to see the strange thing or what strange thing might be happening. Amen? And that's Peter Wagner's book again. It says, and suddenly. Amen? And suddenly. Touch your neighbor and says, and suddenly. Something is going to happen suddenly to you this morning. Amen? Amen. It's not just going to happen, happen haphazardly. It's something that you have been waiting on for a long time. It's going to happen. It's an unsudden moment. God is going to end suddenly this morning in your life. You just recognize that things will change in your life. You just recognize that things will turn around in your life because this is Pentecost. This is an unsuddenly moment. Amen. This is when God is going to move in your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And suddenly, a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. So they had an unsuddenly experience. <laughs> it's like you're going through all kinds of things. And you're wondering what's going to happen. And you don't know where to turn or who to turn to. It seems as though your back is against the wall. Ah, you're talking to this one. They, they don't seem to have an answer. Somebody's just giving you something by the way. You carry, you say, look, I'm sharing my, my situation with you and such and such is the case, but you're not receiving any help at all. This is the day where God says, and suddenly. Uh-huh. This is the day where I believe that God is going to move in your life and change your circumstance and situation and cause your sorrow to turn into joy, to cause your pain to turn into gain, to cause your depression to turn into joy, to cause your displacement to be replacement. Amen? But God is doing a new thing. Touch your neighbor and says, God is doing a new thing. And he's doing it now. Uh-huh. He is doing a new thing. And he is doing it right now. Amen? Hallelujah. And suddenly. Uh-huh. And what? Suddenly. And suddenly, that's all I can stay on this morning because it is so profound in that you might be driving down the road and you're crying, you're wondering what is happening. And all in a sudden, a thought comes that just brings change. Amen. 
Haven't you ever noticed that sometimes you're so worried and sometimes you're so depressed and sometimes and all of a sudden as you're thinking about the Lord, something suddenly just drops in your spirit? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? When all of a sudden, sometimes you just might be sitting behind that computer and you're typing and you're worrying, where can I have or where can I put the words together if you're writing a book? You're sitting there and you're typing and you're wondering, oh man, I'm wondering my thought. I just lost my trend of thought. And suddenly a new thought comes. Ah, and then there's just that flow. Amen? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I believe that this morning is a new morning. For somebody. I believe that change has already taken place in your life. I believe that God has already turned that thing around for you. Uh, I'm seeing that, that the long face. Uh, somebody have been going through a lot of depression over the last couple of weeks. At uh, one, two, three. About four, five weeks. And I'm seeing even right now in the realm of the spirit. Where God says that this is a, this is a breakthrough for you. This is your sudden change. This is where God is doing a new thing. God says, now this is your time and this is your season to break forth. Touch your neighbor and say, break forth and break through in Jesus' name. And suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, touch your neighbor and suddenly, and suddenly. Look, I'm suddenly, I am going to move suddenly. God says, I'm moving suddenly in your life. You know what a sudden, what a sudden change is? Instant change. You're going around heavy all the time and you're moving all in a sudden, Brittany. Suddenly, something happened. Amen? And Sharon? Hey. Standing up and you're looking left and you're looking right. And you don't have an answer. And you're wondering, what can I do? Where can I go? Who can I talk to? Amen? Amen? I believe that this is a sudden time for Bert. But God says that suddenly he would move on your life. In Acts 1, 8 it says, but you shall receive power. My third point. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And to the end of the earth. Amen. Amen. When we think about the Greek word for power in this text it talks about dunamis it literally it is literally translated like this ye shall receive the power of the holy spirit coming upon you you shall receive the power of who the holy spirit coming upon you and the word power here refers to help and or which the holy spirit would grant the power of speaking with new tongues of preaching the gospel with great effect, of enduring great trials, etc. That's from the band's notes. So although we have great, this great power, although we would be speaking the word or speaking in tongues, although we would be able to preach with boldness, it never said that we wouldn't go through something. As it doesn't matter how much Holy Ghost you have. It doesn't matter how much power you flow with. And how much anointing you flow with. Once you're living on this earth, you will go through trials. And the Holy Ghost is given to help us go through trials. I have never met a preacher who said that he has never been through something. The Spirit of God helps us when we are going through situations. Because he comes, one of his names or titles is Comforter. He comforts us in the midst of trials. He comforts us in the midst of troubles. And he empowers us so that we can rise above circumstances and situations so that although you might be going through a trial and notice folks that sometimes or most of the times the trials doesn't just be for one day it starts one day but it can take you months it can take you years so how will i go through that kind of trial without the holy ghost because
We give you thanks, oh God, for Nicole. And Father, we pray, oh God, today that the negativities that she is facing in her household, that they would be eradicated in the name of Jesus. We pray today that you open the doors for her, for her home. Father, we thank you. God says, intentionally begin looking. Start looking for a place. Intentionally begin looking for a place. And begin speaking to him specifically about that place for you and your children. And now receive your breakthrough even this morning. Uh-huh. Now receive even right now your breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. And take that anointing even right now. And let the power of God rest in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. I lift my dear sister before you, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that by the power of your Spirit, she's been having some questions in her mind. About some things that is really pressing in her life. And she's having a lot of pressure from the outside in terms of forcing her to decide. And God says, do not be forced into anything that I have not given you peace about. And even now I see you kind of like on a scooter. You have one foot on the scooter and you're mashing one leg and you're pushing the scooter and you see you're going in circles with the scooter. But the wheel has just broken off of the scooter. It seems as though you are stagnated. And it seems as though that nothing is happening and you can't move forward and it just seems as though stagnation and everything seems to be bombarding you on every side. But I speak now in the name of Jesus that you receive your breakthrough in your life right now and that this breakthrough comes to you this day suddenly in the name of Jesus and receive your breakthrough even right now in the name of Jesus. I lift Sister Claudette before you. Thank you. God says begin to look for... Uh, God says as you choose. God says you choose. God says, and when you begin to choose, I will put it on your heart, the yes or the no, in your choice. So choose, choose the apartment, choose the three bedroom, choose it and receive it. And receive your breakthroughs even right now, Claudette, in the name of Jesus. And sometimes you feel as though, huh, as you have been left out of a lot of things and even in life. As though everything just seems to be pushed back, in, pushed back in my life. And God says, now it's time to spring forward and jump. Jump into your future. God says, I am causing you to leap like a gazelle. I'm causing, God says, the things that you were denied, you'll begin to see the things happen to you speedily. Speedily, speedily, speedily. And you'll begin to testify of the sudden move in your life by the power of the Spirit of God. Now, Claudette, walk by faith and not by sight. And receive your breakthroughs even right now. In the name of Jesus. Because God says your boat, your ship has just come on shore. And now is your time. In Jesus' name. I left mommy before you. I pray that you stir her up even right now. And be healed and walk in your healing. And walk in your victory even right now. In the name of Jesus. And let God minister to you. Aha, uh -huh, now receive. 
in your life right now, right now, receive your breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, receive right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for joining our broadcast today. We hope that it was a blessing to you. We invite you to join us another time. We pray that your week will be a blessing in Jesus' name.